Hello friends, in today's video, I will be talking about some of the basic techniques that will be helpful in addressing proximal humerus fracture dislocations, mainly anterior dislocation will be talking about. So for the exposure of proximal humerus fractures, I've already uploaded a separate video, which you can find in the link below. The points that I will be covering in this presentation will be the safe manipulation of the dislocated head, how to reduce the dislocated humeral head, what are the fixation points and how to prevent the dislocation. So first of all, the positioning is important as I've shown in the previous video also that you have to clear the space behind the posterior part of the shoulder because only then you'll be able to gain adequate exposure near the glenoid and you'll be able to visualize the posterior part of the cuff that means the insertion of the infraspinatus and teres minor and most of these points have already been discussed in the previous video on adequate exposure first of all when you go through the deltopectoral approach your incision should be liberal you have to go proximal to the tip of the coracoid so we have marked the coracoid tip here and our incision is quite proximal to it and when you do that through the deltopectoral interval you have to retract the pectoralis major muscle more medially and then you'll be able to see the dislocated head here but actually this is not only the dislocated head this is the thick cuff insertion or you can say the subscapularis muscle insertion over the head and the capsule of the joint is also intact because this is a fracture dislocation this is not a pure dislocation in which the proximal humerus remains intact so the failure is not occurring at the level of capsule or ligament it is occurring at the level of bone the things that you are seeing here the white part is the capsule along with the insertion of the subscapularis this is the insertion of pectoralis major this is the insertion of the subscapularis muscle over the humeral head and deep to it will be the capsule of the joint which is usually intact so what happens in proximal humeral structure dislocation the head has migrated medially it is impacted against the anterior part of the neck of the glenoid and the glenoid is empty you can see there are some fragments here so the subscapularis muscle is attached till here like this and deep to it will be the capsule so what we are seeing in the previous image this part is this whole insertion of the muscle and capsule and the head is quite deep to it this is not the cartilage this is the ligamentous attachment so you have to be aware about this anatomy now also the head part is below the coracoid coracobrachialis muscle will be here and you will have to retract that muscle also to visualize this part so here we are retracting the pectoralis muscle and deep to the pectoralis muscle we are actually retracting the coracobrachialis also and here around this head part our dissection has to be blunt what you can do you can use your index finger to clear any adhesions so that you should be able to palpate whole of the humeral head contour medially your visualization of this part should be clear because you have to take multiple fiber wire bites or you can use ethibond also we prefer number five fiber wire or number five ethibond for securing the sutures through this part because ultimately we have to secure subscapularis muscle insertion that means the anterior part of the rotator cuff so here you see we have taken the bite subscapularis muscle that means we have taken bites somewhere here or you can say here so these bites will be securing the capsule and the subscapularis muscle so in this video you see the head part is mobile and we are able to move the humeral head by just pulling these fiber wire loops we have taken bites through the subscapularis muscle now once that is done we have to find the biceps tendon so you see the fracture line here the biceps groove is here biceps tendon is usually trapped inside this fracture line so this is the medial fragment which is the head part and this is the lateral fragment which is having some part of the greater tuberosity and in between these fragments will be the biceps tendon now we are able to find the biceps tendon lying inside the fracture so you have to secure and protect the biceps tendon you can retract the biceps tendon laterally away from the fracture line now once that is done you see we have retracted the biceps tendon biceps tendon is under this retractor and then you have to palpate the glenoid so it's clear that this fragment is the head fragment this fragment is the posterior part of the greater tuberosity where the fracture is this is the fracture line and the biceps tendon has been retracted laterally then you have to palpate the glenoid sometimes there are multiple bony fragments lying inside the space which may actually hinder the reduction so you have to ensure that by retracting the biceps tendon posteriorly or laterally and retracting the anterior fragment more anteriorly you should be able to visualize this 
glenoid cavity and there will be some fragments proximally also which will be having attachment of the supraspinal disc so you have to retract everything away from the glenoid and you should be able to see the clear cavity of the glenoid like this so we are visualizing this part now you have to clear every bone fragment that is lying here and that can be used as a graft also when you are doing the plate fixation now once that is done you have to secure the bites through the remaining fragments so you have to take bites from the posterior part of the cuff take multiple loops from this part take some loops through the superior part that means the part which is representing the supraspinatus insertion so you have to ensure that you have secured anterior loops superior loops and the posterior loops so that they can all be secured to the plate when you are fixing the structure now once that is done you have to insert a k wire inside this head fragment when the k wire is inserted that can be used as a joystick to manipulate the fragment like in this video you can see we are manipulating the dislocated head fragment we have multiple cuff bites here and this part is actually the capsule i've told you now i've told you in we have to clear the adhesions that may form in this area which will need to be cleared if we want free manipulation of the, of the head fragment so you have to ensure that the space medial to the humeral head is completely clear there should not be any adhesions in case of late presenting cases sometimes adhesions are quite thick you can use a blunt bone lever to clear the adhesions and you can use a spoon also you can get it autoclave and use a spoon to move the tissue around the humeral head so if you remain close to the humeral head or you can say the capsular part that is covering the humeral head then you will be playing safe in this zone don't go too medial or away from the humeral head you have to remain close to the humeral head you can check in the cm also that you remain close to the humeral head don't go more medially otherwise you will be hindering the neurovascular structure that means the brachial plexus and the brachial artery so that thing has to be avoided so the maneuver is quite important so you see there is impaction of the humeral head against the glenoid neck so before proceeding further you have to ensure that the head is clearly mobile i told you you have to use a joystick k wire to check whether the head is mobile or not if it is not mobile that means there is some kind of adhesion or impaction near the glenoid neck so you can use a periosteal elevator to clear this impaction you have to clear the head fragment and the glenoid so the head should be perfectly mobile and now sometimes what maneuver we do we try to retain the head more laterally and we try to give more force and sometimes we use shen spin also but what happens the shen spin becomes loose and even sometimes the suture breaks so that maneuver has to be avoided because that can actually damage the bone and also that can damage the soft tissue the head is not going to come out because of the pull of the subscapularis muscle the subscapularis muscle will not allow the head to come out so we have to first relax the subscapularis muscle so i told you the wire joystick can be placed in the head fragment now the wire has to be angulated more inwards like this so what will happen the subscapularis muscle will now get relaxed and because it is getting relaxed the head will be more mobile now and you will be able to joystick towards the glenoid and at this point when the wire is angulated more inwards you can pull the sutures that you have applied and you can rotate it further internally to reduce it perfectly towards the glenoid because ultimately the subscapularis muscle is relaxed and that is the only muscular attachment of this head fragment so it should now get reduced also by just giving a posterior push when doing this maneuver you will be able to reduce the head in case it is not relocating properly so just push internal rotation and slight pull of the suture loops that you have secured here will help in relocating the head and sometimes what you can do you can also palpate the head fragment with the index finger and while doing this maneuver of internal rotation then you can push the head towards the glenoid cavity like this so your index finger is medial to the head fragment and you are trying to push it more laterally while same time you are doing internal rotation using the ky joystick so that maneuver is mostly helpful there are some other tricks also like you see here the head is quite medial underneath the coracoid but when you place an index finger and try to push the head more inferiorly you are actually reducing the jump distance between the humeral head and glenoid so ultimately in previous image you see the head the distance between the subchondral bone here and the glenoid here is quite large but when you try to push the head fragment distally like this 
the distance between the glioid and the subfrontal bone is getting reduced. So ultimately by pushing the head fragment inferiorly using your index finger, you will be able to more easily relocate the head. So it's a simple maneuver of internal rotation and pushing the head fragment more distally and then doing this maneuver of further internal rotation and lateral pull will help in relocating the head. And once the head has been relocated, just release the suture loops that you have already secured. Do not try to pull the suture loops now. Because what will happen if you try to pull the suture loops, again there will be external rotation of the humeral head. And that external rotation will actually will result in re-dislocation of the humeral head. So external rotation of the proximal fragment has to be avoided once it has been reduced. Also what you can do? So this is the part where the head is getting dislocated. So you can place a key wire at the end entero inferior part of the glenoid where the head is dislocating. And once the key wire has been placed, the head will now remain in its position. So this key wire will be helpful. Like you see here in the image, we have placed a key wire at the entero inferior part of the glenoid rim. So this key wire will prevent dislocation. And sometimes you can use another key wire also that will be transfixing the humeral head to the glenoid. I tend to avoid this key wire because it can actually damage the glenoid articular cartilage and sometimes injure the labrum also. Now you see why this head is getting dislocated again and again. Because you see the balance of the muscles over this fragment is distorted. We have the anterior pulling muscles but we don't have the posterior pulling muscles. And once we have reduced the fracture to the remaining fragment then only we will be able to restore the balance. And that balance will be securing the head towards the glenoid. And also since the head is going antero inferiorly, it is going because the superior attachment, the superior part of the cuff is also detached. So for the dislocation to happen, you need a failure near the superior insertion of the cuff. That means the supraspinatus muscle. So this fragment once secured to this fragment will prevent the dislocation. So once you have restored the muscle band, that means you have secured bites through the superior part of the curve, you have secured bites through the posterior part of the curve. Like you see here, we have taken bites through the posterior part of the curve. And here we have taken bites through the superior part of the cuff. Then the muscle balance through this dislocated fragments will be restored. When you are securing the fiber wire loop through the plate holes, then try to give maximum amount of tension. Because suppose this head has some impaction in this zone. And when that impacted zone is hitting against the glenoid, then there will be chances of engagement and re-dislocation. Like the patient tries to externally rotate the arm, then the defect may get engaged inside the glenoid rim. So we have to avoid it. So by doing maximal tension in this impacted zone, we'll be able to prevent re-dislocation. So you have to tighten the fiber wire loops around the plate like shown in this image. So you see here, we have taken the anterior bites and secured through the anterior holes of the plate taken the superior bites and secured through the superior holes of the plate and taken the posterior bites and secured through the posterior part of the plate. So by giving the adequate tension, we will be able to restore the balance of the muscles and head will not dislocate again. And also when you are exposing this part, if you find any capsular tear, you can definitely repair that simultaneously. So if you have any queries, you can just put those in the comments. I hope this video will be helpful in your surgical planning.